10 years, not eight, nine, okay? Just to prove by the record, okay? And this is my first time in my life I wear a kundura. And really, it's an honor for me to wear the kundura and to present to you. What I'm gonna talk about is how to choose a residency. Whatever the residency is, but you know we're biased, we're emergency medicine, so I'll give you what we look for and what we do. I'm gonna show you the study that was done in 2006 by Dr. Lovett. And what it did, it interviewed, can we have? Okay. Want me to speak louder? Okay. Uh, it took the applicants, 118 applicants, and did a survey about their interviews, about why they chose where they chose. 93 of them responded, which is about 79%. And they gave them a list of 10 reasons why they decided to pick that particular program. And the number one, the number one reason why they went to that residency was the residents. The residents were happy, the residents had good morale, and they were well. That was the number one reason why the student picked that program. The second reason, which about 96 of them answered, was actually the faculty. How the faculty, how their knowledge, their reputation. So the top two choices had nothing to do with the program director, had nothing to do with what it is, it had to be number one was the resident, what the residents are like, and how they're treated. And the secondly is the core faculty, what they're gonna teach them. And that was the two. And all the way down to the bottom, the last one, which I'm gonna go through, is the location. Where it is, Abu Dhabi, Al Ain, Rashid, or anywhere you go, this is what the last of the choices, of the top choices. This other study, back in 2011, by Dr. Burkhardt, talked about when they go into emergency medicine, what happened to this resident? This is for you to decide what I'm going to do after the residency. From that, 26% of the resident that went to emergency medicine decided to be faculty, decided to be a teacher. One out of five. 57% decided to go to private hospital, community medicine. And that's the majority of the people. And I'm gonna show you why I'm showing you this, so you pick and choose the program. 13% decide to do fellowship. So they said, I wanna do ultrasound, I wanna do critical care. This is one out of seven, okay? 2% decide to go to the military, okay? And join the military. This other study also, from Academic of Emergency Medicine by Dr. Reagan, where it said, a scholarly activity, how can we make a program good for the teachers. And she wrote up a recommendation by the court, and I'm gonna explain what the court is. All the program directors in the US got together and made an association. And it's the most helpful association. You ask anything on the court about any question, about anything, they will all answer you and help you out how to make. That's how I started our program. That's how I picked what kind of things we do. If you have a problem with a resident, you ask, they'll give you all the answers. So the cord is a source of a lot of experience, a lot of information, and they decided this is what we recommend to have a scholarly program. And the recommendation was number one, if you look into a program who has a clear goal and objectives, why are they doing what they're doing? And they have experts to teach, so they match the topic with the expert physician who's teaching it. So if one likes critical care, he teaches critical care. If like ultrasound, we'd be the one that's teaching ultrasound. And also recommended protected time. Protected time for residents, protected time for attending. Not just to have fun, I'm, I like to show this for fun, but to teach. You cannot be working 50 hours a week 
and expect to take time to prepare your lecture, prepare your stuff, prepare your presentation. You have to have time. And they have, the hospital has to give protected time to this particular attending as well as the resident. The resident can, cannot be used for service. The resident has to be education with service. But number one is education. And that's what you need to look into. And they look for the mentorship. The program has to have a mentor for every resident they have. They have to someone that can talk to one on one, that the resident look up to. And when you get this together, that's what makes a good program. That's what makes a scholar a program. Another article of emergency medicine by Dr. Bat. And this article talked about what there is anything we look at in the program at this resident that can predict this is a high performer. That particular person was one of the top of my resident. What did he look like? And how can we pick him? Because every program wants to pick the best resident. And they looked into this. The number one choice, if the student had honor in the clerkship. So if the student took emergency medicine clerkship and got honor in that clerkship, that is a very good student to pick in our program. Second, USME, the score. The higher the score, there it is. Or your HAD exam, or whatever exam you have at your end of your medical school, your internship. The Alpha Omega, uh, Alpha Omega Alpha, the, this is particular organization is for honor students. If they're designed into that, that tell you this is a good student to pick. And interview score, like what Dr. Nadim said. This is interview score. The higher the score, the higher the chance for you to be coming into part of the residency. And the last one is the higher ranking, OK, from someone else. Someone else who knows you, who put a letter of recommendation and said, you are the person that we want. And finally, if you did any research or presentation, if you did five or more on that particular study, that was a high performer. So before I show you, this is the picture of all our program directors. And I will introduce each one of them. But just to show you what we look for, what you should prepare, and what should you look for in the, in the program. Number one, if you're interested in emergency medicine, take a rotation in emergency medicine. Spend the time with whatever specialty you want to do in the hospital you want to go to. Show them who you are. Let them see you. Let them work with you. And if you think you're great, and yet they think you are great, that would be enough. Number two, make sure you have high grades. Make sure you get a good letter of recommendation. And make sure if you have an honor part of the medical school, that would be high list for them to pick you. And at the same time, you as a person, you need to interview the program. You need to look at the program as you're interviewing them. This is four years of your life that you're going to take to spend with that program. And you need to know, do, do, do we qualify to me? It's a two-way street. We will look at you. We're going to make the best of you. And you should also make sure you look at us and say, do I want to go here? So you're going to ask the program director. You're going to ask the resident. Sit down with the resident and ask them how they're doing, how they treat them. Do they have protected time? How their teacher, how their conference? Check them out and see if the resident are happy. Remember the number one choice was what? The wellness. That was the most important of every applicant. Are the resident happy? Are the resident well treated? How their morale? then your next choice is to pick on the faculty. I know you're going for an interview, but you want to know the reputation of the faculty, the reputation of the program. Check the program out to see what they have. So you make sure the faculty are expert, make sure the faculty are willing to teach, and also to make sure that the faculty are given time to teach. If the faculty are not given time to teach, they will not teach you. You also look, like I said, with the recommendation from the court. Do they have mentorship? 
who are their mentors? And who do we work, how the mentorship works? How does it go from there? If you combine with that and you look into the program and you want to be academic, look into a program that has teaching, that has maybe associated with the medical school, go and teaching intern, teaching residents, teaching other places. This is what I'm going to do because I want to be a faculty. But as far as the rest of the program, they're all going to teach you emergency medicine. So if you want to do community medicine, then you can pick the program that you're going to live there for the next four years feeling good and feeling like you're part of a family. To show you here, this is Dr. Aisha al She is the program director for MUFRA. Dr. Uh, uh, Rasha, okay, Rasha, I'm gonna hesitate a little bit. And uh, <laughs> Rasha is the associate program director for SKMC with Dr. Jamal. May Salama is with us, in, with us is uh, one of the faculty at Tawam. Maitha, she runs the EMS for our program and many programs. She's the director. Dalal, she's a social program with Zayed. I'm not sure who this guy is, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, he's not wearing kandura. It doesn't really count. Okay. This is Dr. Faraz. He's the director of the emergency medicine at Rashid. Dr. Jamal is the director. And Abdullah Al Kabi, director for Zayed, SKMC and Zayed. This is our, the director, that's what you're going to meet if you want to go into emergency medicine. You're going to meet all of us if you interview all the program, and you're going to pick. So remember, prepare yourself, and also, you are an important person for us. If we don't pick you, we have no residence. So it's not a one-way street. Make sure you go to the program that you're going to feel well, and you're going to be part of that family.